video is for everyone out there struggling to care for someone they love who has pandas, pans, or any form of autoimmune encephalitis. I'm Dr. Barbara Hale Richland. On behalf of myself and everyone at the Pandas Network, we want you to know we hear you. We have heard the tremendous outpouring from patients and families struggling to find help. We are here to guide and support you because we understand how difficult it can be to find the help and treatment you so desperately need. The symptoms of pandas are dramatic and extreme. Severe OCD, abnormal movements, rituals, motor and vocal tics appear suddenly and dramatically, sometimes overnight. Your previously healthy child now has sudden unexplainable rages, phobias, severe separation anxiety, behavior and academic problems. Many will isolate, often refusing to attend school or even leave their home. Many parents feel hopeless and fear their child will never be well again. Often they blame themselves or feel like they've failed as a parent. It is important you know that you did not fail your child. Of all the PANDAS patients I have treated, there wasn't a single one that didn't have a parent with PTSD. Many often find it difficult to talk about their experience even years after their child's last flare. This is made even worse by the limited number of physicians and other medical professionals capable of treating this disorder. The good news is that PANDAS is an autoimmune condition that is treatable. Many cases, even very severe ones, will resolve completely. Because the symptoms of pandas and pans are so alarming, parents struggle to know which ones are an emergency. Thankfully, most pandas symptoms are not life-threatening. However, some symptoms of pandas overlap with those of another condition that can be life-threatening. That condition is called acute encephalitis. Acute encephalitis is another form of autoimmune encephalitis, just like pandas, pans, and many other conditions are. Autoimmune encephalitis is a term that describes a broad category of diseases caused when there's an underlying abnormal immune response to the central nervous system. Acute encephalitis patients will frequently present with fevers, seizures, headaches, nausea, or vomiting. So go to the nearest emergency room if your child develops any of those symptoms. Also seek emergency treatment if your child is struggling to stay awake, becomes lethargic or confused, or if they have trouble walking, talking, or develop slurred speech. Changes in taste, touch, or smell are also urgent and require immediate treatment. Pandas, pans, and acute encephalitis patients can all have symptoms of psychosis. Up to a quarter of pandas patients and half of those with acute encephalitis will experience auditory, visual, or olfactory hallucinations, meaning they will hear, see, or even smell things that aren't real. Other psychotic symptoms include delusional, paranoid, or illogical thoughts such as believing others can read their mind or that they're being watched or followed. Other delusions are more unusual. For example, some pandas patients will have the irrational belief that a friend, parent, or even a pet has been replaced by an identical imposter and isn't real. If your child develops any symptoms of psychosis, seek treatment immediately because psychotic symptoms in children under 13 years of age are extremely rare. So it's essential that acute encephalitis and other possible medical causes are ruled out first. Other symptoms of PANDAS that may require urgent treatment include severely restricted food intake. It is important you monitor your child's weight carefully as rapid weight loss and dehydration both require urgent treatment. This may also indicate a need to move more quickly to immunomodulatory therapies, such as IVIG. Many PANDAS patients have severe mood swings. They may injure themselves or others during episodes of rage and agitation through hitting, cutting, scratching, or headbanging, 
Again, seek emergency treatment if you feel their safety or the safety of others is at risk. Sadly, the devastation of pandas will lead children to express very dark, even suicidal thoughts, something no parent ever wants to hear. For some children, they may be a danger to themselves, so it's important to engage with them around what they're feeling. Ask them about their intentions and any plan they may have. Talking about suicidal thoughts does not make them stronger or more likely to occur. In fact, it's the opposite that is true. Be sure to go through your home, especially their room, and remove or lock up any items they may use to hurt themselves. These same thoughts in other pandas' patients may be a manifestation of their OCD. They may not actually feel suicidal, but they are not able to stop the negative, recurrent, intrusive thoughts of suicide. For other patients, these words may be an expression of how sad, hopeless, or alone they feel. Nevertheless, any talk of suicide is taken extremely seriously, and it's very difficult to assess the risk of harming themselves early in treatment or during a symptom flare. The most important thing to remember is that if you have any concern about the safety of your child, take them to the nearest emergency room. Many parents will turn to the internet to learn more about pandas or to find help for their child. The internet can be a fantastic tool for research and finding support, but it is also full of misinformation and unproven, often expensive treatments that are not medically sound. It's no wonder so many pandas, patients, and families feel confused, scared, and frustrated. That is why the Pandas Network was founded, to help families like yours. The Pandas Network has tremendous resources for patients, families, schools, as well as physicians and other medical professionals. You will find information to better understand pandas and how to guide your child through this. Remember, this is a new disease model and a tremendous amount of research is being done. Research often funded by the Pandas Network through donations from families all over the world. You will find links to important pandas research articles and the research roadmap right on the Pandas Network website. If you suspect your child has pandas, a great starting place is with their primary care physician because they already know your child's baseline and medical history. Even if they've never seen a patient with pandas before, the Pandas Network has incredible resources for them, such as the Pandas Pans Consortium Guidelines for parents and doctors. These guidelines include diagnostic algorithms, how to treat psychiatric and behavioral symptoms, and when to use immunomodulatory therapies. It also covers the treatment and prevention of infections that could cause future flares. Remember, pandas is an autoimmune condition that is manageable. If you're not able to get help through your primary care physician or provider, the website also has links to the Pandas Provider Network to help you locate someone in your area who treats pandas or pans. For more information or to make a donation to this very worthy cause, please contact the pandasnetwork.org.